All right, we're back with part two. Let's finish this off strong, shall we? Fucking lightning bolts and goblins. Let's do it. Okay. They're almost Time all out for goblins. a second. Time out. Okay. For those of you at home, oh Christian and Eric are separate fucking people. <laughs> Eric is the one who loves goblins. <laughs> Christian isn't. Why the fuck did so many of you make goblins? It's because goblins are the best. Period. <laughs> he, he got you there. <laughs> All right. Eric, read this whole color. Start with Goblin Rocketeer, which is like Rocketeer, except for funnier. Hell yeah, I'll start with this kick-ass goblin. <laughs> goblin Rocketeer is two and a red for a two-three goblin. You can sacrifice a creature to have Goblin Rocketeer does one damage to any target and gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. It's another free sacrifice outlet engine. It is, and it does damage to any target. Chef Kiss, I love it. Yes. It is limited in the amount of times you can do it per turn, only sort of. You can do it three turn, three times. You can do it seven Once. turns, times. Yeah, I guess if you stack it. Yeah, it's like, just you better win because yeah. this thing's gone afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm i a huge fan of this. I mean, I it's a 2-3, so like that's anemic stats, but it's still a dude. It's and a that's goblin cool. bombardment. Yeah, and it's a yeah. goblin bombardment. So. I mean, it's, it's hard to say no to a second goblin bombardment. It, Looking at your list, I'm trying to figure out like, yeah, it fits in fine. You'll you'll do fine. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, it's yeah. I mean, like, it just fits fine. It's good enough. It's you love goblins. I do, and I do think this card's like legitimately an interesting design where it's like, okay, minus one, minus one until end of turn. Yeah, if you're gonna go all in, you better make it count. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, like if you're just trying to do slight chips of damage here and there, cool. Yeah, no, absolutely. 100% agree with you. All right, Brad, let's, let's give you the next one because I know you love this art. So next up is Goblin Coronation, which is two in red for a sorcery. Target opponent becomes the monarch. Draw a card. That's it. Oh, also the flavor text is now we celebrate. This one's <laughs> weird and interesting. This one's terrible, but I'll give the person who made it the fact that they may not know how broken the Monarch is. <laughs> if it said you draw two cards, it would still be worse than Divination, and I would allow it. Mm. Uh, if it was instant <laughs> and you draw two cards, I would still allow it. As it stands right now, it's not worth. Nah, this card's good, dude. <laughs> it's not good. It's not good, Eric. Nah, this card's good. Is it good because it's it called Goblin Coronation? <laughs> If it was called Ogre Coronation, <laughs> would you like it? No, I, I actually legitimately... Ogre so Coronation like... is two and a red <laughs> for a sorcery. Four... Target opponent becomes the monarch. Draw a card. Do you like it, Eric? Four rare cubes, no. But I think that this is probably good enough for an uncommon. Because three drop m become monarch. Because you're the aggressive deck. You're going to play this and then hit him with your one drop and become monarch. A three drop become monarch is a strong fucking card and then they gave you just draw a card on top of it you're not wrong though that's that's the thing that makes this no i'm not me. wrong i i'm honestly not wrong like this is a strong card because then then the opponent has the option of try to take monarch back question mark against the red aggro player who's attacking in sure good job <laughs> Like, and they, they, you spend your resources back, trying right? to get Monarch back, and you're <clears throat> going to die, most likely, unless you have a board wipe. Yeah, which, I mean, then they might have, and then you're fucked. Yeah, but you're the aggressive deck. If they have the board wipe when you've overcommitted, you're dead anyway. So, like, that's true. That, that's true. You can't play around those things. Like that's They have the out. So uh, I'm just like, this This is like legitimately a strong so, card. so hard to evaluate this. I think this is actually even solid in like the aggressive style Spellsy Matters decks as well with like the Sprite Drake or whatever it's called. The is Sprite it, Dragon. Yeah, where you're playing the hasty is it cards with spells, becoming monarch, swinging, drawing cards. It's all coming together and doing cool stuff. This is the kind of card that I'll probably, regardless of where it ends up sitting ranking wise amongst all of these... I'll probably have to try it out because I'm curious to see how it plays. No, it's it's not worth it. If this was a single red mana, it's worth it. Well, it's not. There's no what? cost to doing so, Brad. That's what I'm saying. It's like I can just. Put Are it you trying to tell me a red 
gain monarch is an acceptable <laughs> card. Fuck red, off. Red no. gain monarch draw card. Red. Fuck off. Red no, has, Brad. You're insane. Red. Red has ma- gain monarch. The problem is they're all attached to shitty cards. Exactly. Because uh, red is the card is the color that should not get easy access to monarch in a one v one format. You found mad Eric. Well, because he doesn't understand how to evaluate this card. <laughs> no, I I get what you're saying. The problem is it's only good when you're ahead on board state. Congratulations, you're the aggressive fucking deck. The problem is you don't always fall to plan A. It's Isn't that true for right? most red This is a three drop. This isn't a five drop. <sighs> Your three drops are plan A. I'll give you you should test this. Alright? Yes. Okay. I'll give you I'll give you that. I would be where I'm sitting, which is very, very happily on this fence is that I think that you're both probably a little bit too far in your directions, and I think I could see it go either way. You know what I mean? Like, I could... Almost as if booze was involved in this episode. (laughs) Let's move on to Socratic Goblin. Socratic Goblin is a single red mana for a 2-1 goblin, so we know it's going to have a downside after this. Socratic Goblin cannot block when Socratic Goblin enters the battlefield investigate. Flavor text was included with this one, which is Fight now, think later. Which is beautiful. I love it. It is beautiful. I love it. This is a good card. Uh, it's a fine card. Yeah. I have no reason to dislike this card. It's totally serviceable. Yeah. I, I, it's a card. I, it's printable at uncommon. It's probably more likely to be a rare. Probably. Uh, yeah, probably, but it's not like it's, it doesn't look crazy that it's uncommon. No, I think depending on the format, that's a perfectly reasonable thing. Um, yeah. A 2 1 for 1 is the kind of thing that, like, they can print without too much problems, but they don't just because that right. can lead to issues in the limited format. Right. Um, can't block isn't a big deal. Like, it's this just is just one of those, like, slight downsides, whatever. This card, they would not be able to probably print in a limited set that cares about artifacts, unlike Thraven and Spectre. Not, they couldn't print this at Uncommon in those sets. Sure, but they could print right. it at Uncommon in a set that doesn't care. At which point, do does the artifact thing matter? I was going to completely bring up Thraven and Spectre as like, the that was a common, and it was a 1-2 in white. Yeah, we can True. switch it to a two one in red and give it a slight downside. Good enough. So we need yeah. to print this on Ravnica, is what you're saying? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, I don't really care. Because my no, no no my problem is you need goblins to be available and you need it to be on Ravnica. I mean, it doesn't have to be a goblin turn into a human. I don't care, dude. It doesn't like typing doesn't matter. At which point we're changing text on the card. So yeah, as yeah. as printed, it would need the overlap of somewhere where investigate is okay. And Goblin is okay, which currently doesn't exist except for maybe Ravnica. Ravnica could work, yeah. Yeah. All that aside. So Ravnica, so Ravnica 4 will include this card. <laughs> All of that aside, none of that actually matters. This card no. is sweet. And this is another one that it's like, I'm definitely going to try this out in my cube. I don't know if it makes it as the top three yet, but it, it, it unfortunately suffers from the fact that while a beautiful, simple design, it's a simple design. You know what I mean? I do think it does help open up the artifact aggro yes, in absolutely. Uncommon. Absolutely. So there's something there, I, I guess. But yeah, it is a pretty simple design. Sure. <sighs> You're absolutely right. Yeah. I just... I there's. I feel like we're reading too much into yeah, this. Yeah, there's only so much Probably. credit I can give for Red Thraman Inspector, I think. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? I mean, Thraven is uh, a fucking cool it's card. Better. So. Yeah. No, no, it's, no. It's so this good. is a fucking two one. This is a two one. Let's not <laughs> no, let's not get over crazy. That fact. Yeah. <laughs> if Thraven Inspector was a two one, it'd be the best white one drop. No, I understand that, but I'm saying red in flavor. So you know, it's it's an aggressive sure, card as sure. opposed to just like a one two, right? We're going against flavor just by giving it investigate. No, let's, no, no, because it's it's a cratic goblin. You fight now and you think later. There's flavor there. All right. I love it. Flavor flavor text is saving this card. Let's move yeah. on. All right. I got to read this one. Night Shift Revolt. This is what my body did over the past two weeks. <laughs> this is the spoodiest card because of the background that no one will ever hear. 
Three and a red for a 2-2 two, two human. This human has Riot, which is this creature enters the battlefield with your choice of a plus one plus one counter or haste. Night Shift Revolt can't be blocked by creatures with toughness four or greater. It's the anti-Seraph of Dawn tech. It also has other humans you control have Riot. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, create a 1-1 one, one human creature token. Who boy. Quick, while well, Eric's gone to the bathroom, let's talk about this from a flavor standpoint. I don't like that it's called Night Shift Revolt, and its creature type is just human. If it was human peasant, <laughs> I would allow the silly name. Oh man, they missed out. But Night Shift Revolt is the exact name of something I would give a sorcery that gives something similar, but stronger. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, you're right. So from a from a top down standpoint, we have a failure. But from a card standpoint, Christian, get to it. I have gone around and around and around on this card because sometimes I read it and I say it's busted, and then other times I read it and I go, "Well, it's four mana in your red deck, and like it's not. You don't get the creature. Well, actually, you do get it on the first turn. Never mind. But you." Yeah, yeah you do. like the riot on every token that you make in every other creature is good, but kind of just making two twos or giving them hate. You know what I mean? Like, I don't. Is this card busted? Do you guys not understand aggro? No, we, we have don't. a hard time. Yeah, Eric, why don't you answer the question? Because here's the thing. Eric, it's the aggro guy. Here's the thing. As the guy who just swings two ones for one, please explain yes. this to us. This him. is a four drop that makes either two twos or one ones that can swing immediately. Every turn. Yes. Those are cards. I mean, that, that. I don't understand them. What else do you have? Is that is that like a six mana card? If if we were in rare cubes, obviously the three drop goblin rabble masters are better. Yes. But we're not in a rare they cube. Are. So what do you have at four? Flangtum Kavu? No, no, no. Let's not. I, I don't want to judge this on I don't have four drops because it's obviously good enough to play i'm wondering is it too good no it's a four drop and it's an aggressive card oh that's what your point is you only have so many of them <laughs> this is good enough to be in the deck we are so bad at fight. aggro cards he had this whole thing and i thought we he are. was saying it was too good my point is both it's perfectly reasonable for your cube as a four drop aggressive creature while at the same time not being so busted that it's a goblin Rebel Master and a obvious rare in the aggressive decks. This okay. seems perfectly balanced for the aggressive decks that are trying to push as a four drop. And like it would be different if you had other options, but you don't. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, I I do agree. Like we get Hellrider. Hellrider is better. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, yeah. You've solved fucking aggro. I'm having trouble going from rare to uncommon here. Okay. It is I agree yeah. with you. I agree with you. I'm sorry. And as somebody who doesn't have experience with any Rabble Master or like four drops that even do anything remotely close to this, it's just very hard for me to evaluate what it actually does in game. Okay, let's move on to Goblin Bombardment, except it costs a mana, which is called mm. Goblin Potato Cannon. There is so much wrong about what you just said. <laughs> this card is so much more complicated than that. Okay. Christian, read us Goblin Potato Cannon. Goblin Potato Cannon. One and a red for an artifact. It has two abilities. One, and sacrifice a creature, create a food token. And the other is, sacrifice a food, Goblin Potato Cannon deals two damage to any target, then flip a coin. If you win the flip, you lose a life. If you lose the flip, you lose three life. I love this card. I'm sure I love you everything do. everything about this card. It's a very fun card. Is it good, though? No, I don't know, it's not, and I'm sorry. I don't think so. I don't think so. I, paying? Did I not just say goblin bombardment? Except it costs a mana. Yeah, and paying mana for goblin bombardment is it does two damage instead of one though. That's like two damage. Fifty percent of the time. Fifty percent of the time. So it does one point five damage. No, 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 no. no. It it's always does. Two. Shock to something. It just sometimes hurts you oh. for one and sometimes oh, hurts you for three. Oh, shit. Yeah. No, it's always shocking okay. okay. Okay, that was my fault. That was my fault. So it's one in a red. It's an enchantment instead of... Or sorry, it's an artifact instead of an enchantment. Which is fragile. Eh, it yes. hardly matters. So you pay a mana, yeah. 
get the food to sacrifice. Okay, so it's it's better than Goblin Bombardment? It's Goblin Bombardment, but you have to pay one to do two. Let's ignore all the life coin flipping nonsense because that doesn't technically matter most of the time, except when it does. Okay. There's also the slight added change of like, you also are making food, so there's the intermediate ability of like, you can gain yes. life with this card. And okay. you get the food token, so if tokens matter and you're trying to say, yes. yes, there's other, let's ignore all of the side cases, though. <laughs> this is going in the Aristocrats deck. <laughs> it matters, though. It, okay, I agree. It matters. You can't just play it in a token deck. But in the deck that's going to play it, it's probably just a second Goblin Bombardment that's weirder. Yes, I was gonna say better, but cost of mana. But weirder is the best way to sum that up. Like I it? can't say better. I would or test worse. it. It's just weird. I would, and I love it. I would never in a normal set. I would never pass up this card without testing it. Yes. So I'm going to say you should at least try it out and see if it fits what you want in the custom card category. Whether or not this ends up winning, I'm with this card. I agree with you. Yeah. I okay. It's tough to say because we've had, haven't we had something that costs one? We had one red mana and then it was two and sacrifice a creature to deal two damage. And that was not good. Oh, it was two and sacrifice yes. a creature. And that was always the problem with it. I actually said, I said at the time when that was printed that I would be interested at one mana and deal two. And that's what this okay. is, which is why I'm not poo pooing it. So next up we have. Fire Screeching Dragon, which is 3 red red for a 4-4 four, four flying haste creature dragon. It has adventure as well. The adventure in this case is an instant, which is called Dragon Hellfire for 1 and a red, which is deal 2 damage to any target. So compared to Bone Crusher Giant, this one is an uncommon versus rare. You lose the flavor text on the adventure half, and instead of the creature half being Bone Crusher Giant, you get a Flying Haste 4 4 for 5, which to me is a slam dunk. Adventure is a very strong mechanic. Yes. Okay, Spooty, is this too strong? That's the only That's thing the real I'm question. worried about. Because I'm with you. It's one of those like Flying Haste 5 drop 4 4 is pretty strong compared to what you have. Like Charging Monster Sword is probably the best. It option is. You've it's the best got. five drop creature. Yes, I would argue it's close to the only five drop creature in red. That's good, but and like flying is better, right? You've also got the enchantment that's sort of a creature. I agree right? with you, but that's splitting hairs. Um, yeah, yeah. This it, it is obvious to me. This is good enough. Okay, here's so the here's question what I'm gonna is: say. Is I, it too good? I think this is my opinion on this. I feel about this the same way I feel about damnation i don't think if i put this in my cube it would break the format i think it would be good i think it would be playable i don't think it would be unbeatable and i think the only reason why we're having this discussion is because watsi would not print this at uncommon not but that close. does not negate this card being legal for this contest because i need top end uh red creatures i would love for them to be you know, dragon type things so that my green red decks do something. My question to that is, uh -huh. could you make it slightly worse? And yes. I'm not trying to poo poo whoever put this design in. My thing no. is, let's try and keep the cube as close to what Watsi would possibly print as possible correct in this thought experiment type thing could you put this as a six drop because currently i see you're not running any six drops in red and i think it would be a completely reasonable six drop with the two drop adventure as a four four flying haze the only yeah that's kind of my fucked up part is i also agree that i would test it at that point right like i i'm not saying like if It'd you be just, loose. It'd be loose. If you just play it as it is, it's good, and I don't think it's too good. But could you make it slightly worse, and it would be better for the cube? So my question is also then, 
are we going to ignore the ELD cards all over performed in every format? That's kind of the thing is like yeah. adventure is very strong. It is. So I don't know. Like, okay, so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give a final thing here because we we've we've ahead. explained. You mentioned could this be six mana? Absolutely, totally, yes. The only issue I have with that is that while it's still a totally good card, it then stops necessarily solving the problem in some ways, where then at six mana, this isn't your green-red, mid-range, you know, play on turn three kind of card. I where you get that. in there and start getting in there. I you know what I mean? This isn't, it, it, it no longer can act like your, uh, your Thunder Maul. If you're playing it on the front side... You're never playing this on turn three, because to play it on turn three, you need elf elf. Even then, then you're missing out on the adventure. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you're playing elf elf, you're probably not playing one drop, one drop. This is a pie in the sky dream. You're probably playing one drop, two drop or something. At which point you are not probably playing dragon hellfire. At which point this is a totally acceptable five drop. Isn't that false? Don't you go turn one elf, turn two elf, and dragon hellfire, and then turn three play it? That's, again, yeah. like I said, pie in the sky dream where you get two one drop elves. Most likely it's a one drop elf plus two dropped elf to get your three drop five, or sorry, to get your turn three five drop. I don't really have two drop elves. Do you not play? I, I, I'm i saying I don't have that many. I, it's actually more likely to have two one drop elves. So you're yeah. playing Wall of Roots, you're playing Sacro Tribe Elder, you're playing Paradise Druid, you're playing Devoted Druid. So you're playing four of them. You're only playing one, two, which Tree Speaker is not either. So you're playing one, two, three, four, five. So you're playing five to four between one drop and two drop. Plus all the enchantments. <sighs> yeah. Which is only Utopia Sprawl and Wild Growth. Uh, so it, it's questionable versus Far Seek and Winding Ways. It's really fine questionable. either way. So it's, it's a 50-50 split. I'll give you that. Yeah. At which point, I'm still arguing that this is probably okay if it was printed in ELD. The question is, are we going to pretend that this is like equipment where we find out this mechanic is stronger <laughs> than magic? And that's why I'm saying I think at five, it's slightly too strong. I agree with but you. But I don't think, and this is the key, I don't think at five, it's too strong for your cube. No. And th I mean, that's what the entire design was for. Like, let's design a card for your cube as pushed as possible, right? Like, and that's why I'm trying to say that. So, like, I, I, I get, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you, Spooty. I, this is a good card. It's so hard, right? Because you're like, it, this is what's always hard about customs is it's easy to make a good card. Well, yeah. It's easy to make a bad card. And it is so hard to both create a balanced card and judge a card as balanced without playing it. Yeah, and especially when we have to think about it, like, in the mindset of your cube. In a very specific environment. Yeah. Yeah, where where a winner isn't who is the best card, right. play-wise. Like, I could yeah. make it's the best difficult. card. Zero mana, deals yeah. 220 damage. Instant. <laughs> Congratulations. Fucking yeah. won. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, no, I'm... I'm Let's, I like Fire Screeching Dragon. Yeah. Okay, I'm in. I love this card. It, we should move on, but... Oh, I'm taking the next one. Okay. Of course you are. I'm taking yeah. the next one. Of course you one. are. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck saying it. I don't know how to say it, but I'm taking the next one. Try it. Try it right now. Try on it. Air. Goblin Rebel Mature. <laughs> Goblin Rebel Amateur is two and a red for a 2-2 two -two Goblin Warrior. Other goblin creatures you control attack each combat if able. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a 1-1 one, one red goblin creature token. So, is this the rabble master you wanted, Spooty? <laughs> it's, uh, you know, <sighs> okay. So when I actually read through this, I kind of like was skimming through right at the beginning. And especially because they sent it with the exact art of goblin rabble master, I skimmed through. It's messing with me, dude. I I thought it was literally Goblin Rabble Master, but they changed the name and made it uncommon. And I was like, boo. <laughs> and then I actually realized it. Is and then they just something. deleted a line and called it fine. <laughs> this is the exact opposite of Somber Shred to me. Somber Shred, you had to ignore the art for how good it made the design. Granted, the design was pretty good to begin with. Yeah. This one, the design is good, but the art subtracts from it. 
And this was actually submitted to us this way. This was not the fault of a patron. Uh, yes. I don't know, and dude. I mean, it's like... I'm still not going to judge the art for the or the card for the contest by the art, by the way. But it's hard not to, Correct. and it screws with you at first, especially because of the name. I yeah. mean, it's Goblin Rebel Master, except instead of a master, he's an amateur, and he doesn't have. The yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's a cute it's a cute card. <sighs> yeah, the lack of haste on the token is big. Oh, is that's right. That's also missing. It I is. I mean, that. that's why Rabble Master is so good compared to the other Rabble Master variants. I did not realize it was missing that. I thought it was just missing the buff to the Master. Because it's one of those, like, as you're playing your three drop in the aggressive deck, you're still hitting them for at least one. Yeah, no, I totally missed that. That that kills it for me. This is why I keep Eric as a co-host. Um, I, I don't think it kills it for your cube because you don't have any of the variants. But is it is it better than Goblin Ambush then? I don't What's Goblin what's Goblin Ambush should do exactly? I know it's I, an uncommon now. I don't know that card. Yeah, I don't is it a red card or is it a It's a mono red card, three mana from a Lara block. It is a rare in a Lara block. It was reprinted at uncommon after that. I swear to god this is a real magic card. I believe you. Goblin Assault. Goblin Assault, thank you. Okay. Goblin Assault, two and a red for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a 1-1 one, one red goblin creature token. Oh. Haste into play. Goblin creatures attack each turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, instead of enchantment, it's attached to a 2-2. Two, two. So it's a slightly I mean, better Goblin Assault. Goblin Assault is not good in cube. No, it's not. It's not good in uncommon cube no. either, which is where my It's also is. not slightly better. The Goblin Assault tokens get haste. Yeah. Hmm. So this isn't just better Goblin Assault. No. I, I would so... argue the fact that it's a creature is a downside. Same. Especially so, since it doesn't have the Rabble Master Pump. Yeah, it's just uh, a three mana two two. This can't have the Rabble Master Pump in addition no. to being non hate. No, 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 that would be a then terrible it's, that's design. literally just Rabble Master. Like, yeah. Yeah. Let's just take <laughs> Rabble Master. Debatable Rabble Master. A rare into an uncommon. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then, then we're at debatable Rabble Master. But as it stands versus Goblin Assault, the the fact that it doesn't make the tokens haste is very iffy. And I don't think I could argue this at all because of it. No. Which is sad, because I really do... I like what the person who was making this card was attempting. It's mm-hmm. weird because... Okay, so from a design aspect, forcing you to make a 1-1 Goblin and then forcing all Goblins to attack does not make a good design in my opinion because it's one of those like for new players you look at it going okay i made a new one one goblin i have to attack right but they don't have haste that's why goblin assault and goblin rabble master have haste tokens is because it's Uh i made a dude that's a goblin and this says i have to attack so i attack like that's that's why they are that way from a design aspect um absolutely so it's one of those like I still don't think Goblin Rabble Amateur is bad. Like, this isn't a bad card compared to everything else that you have. I just don't know if it's good enough. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Let's move on to Happier Times in Green. Yeah, let's go Postal. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> let's start off with Postal Pangolin. Pangolin? Pangolin. Is that Pangolin? Pangolin? That's an actual creature. That's like a, an <laughs> animal. That's a real thing. It's a thing. I, it exists on Earth. Mine was an equally valid explanation for the name of that creature in real life. Postal, Postal Pangolin. Pangolin. No. Postal Pangolin. Stop it. Pangolin. It's Pangolin. Pangolin. Why is it Pangolin? Now you're talking like a fucking East Coast piece of that shit. That is just how it's pronounced. <laughs> no. No, it's not. Postal Penguin. It's the creature bird. Okay, okay. Postal Penguin. Oh my god. Pangolin? Why do you just keep saying it your way? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just, Postal Pangolin. Just keep saying it. Oh, two same green way. green. He has not <laughs> changed <laughs> it one time. <laughs> well, okay, Christian, very slowly tell me what I'm saying wrong with the word Pangolin. <laughs> you. <laughs> R R dumb dumb. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I moved the uh, mic. Someone's not getting paid for this episode, and it isn't me. 
This episode is four hours already, and we're maybe two thirds done. This is gonna be the longest fucking edit job ever. <laughs> Read us everything but the name for Postal Pangolin. Postal Pangolin is two green green for a four four creature pangolin. Pangolin. It has trample, hexproof during combat. Rampage 3, for those of you who haven't been around since Legends, <laughs> and for each creature that blocks Postal Pangolin beyond the first, that creature's controller may draw a card. You killed Eric. <laughs> I killed Eric while saying the card correctly. You actually Christian. did say it pretty much correctly. And then the you said I creature Pan- Pangolin. Pangolin. <laughs> it's Pangolin. I did like when he said creature Pangolin. Pink. Wow. <laughs> I was drinking right at the time you said that hurt so bad. Christian, Eric, calm down. <laughs> Christian is for sure thinking this is called Pangolin, even though it's Pangolin. Aha. Uh-huh. It's a real creature in real life, which is kind of related to the creature that balls up and becomes a circle made of spikes. It's called an armadillo. Armadillo. It's related to an armadillo. Or as you would say, an armadillo. No, it's an armadillo. (laughs) This is a pangolin. Sorry, pangolin. Postal pangolin is a creature pangolin for Christian. Would you like to start us off on this discussion, Christian? Brad, can you first explain to me what rampage is? So... I'm doing a lot of it, but I need you to explain. For those of you who haven't been around since Legends... Rampage is, for each creature that blocks this creature beyond the first, add plus blank plus blank to it, which in this case is three. Okay, this is not, it enters with three counters when something something. No, it's only blocked. No, no. Oh, thank it's God. On, okay. No, no, it's related to the last ability. Okay, thank God. It all, it all actually makes sense as a design. I Honestly, I didn't remember Rampage. This card, before I get into it, in the eyes of my girlfriend, who I read all of these card submissions to, even the most awkward of them, to her, this is the only winner. Because she loves pangolins, which are a real creature pronounced pangolin. That that image is super cute with the little hat on it. It's kind of creepy yeah. with the red eyes, but I mean, well, it's also postal. cute at the same time. He's... He's obviously gone postal, Eric. Why are you having problems with this? No, I'm good with it. I'm good with it. Eric, when you control the mail, you control information. (laughs) Newman. That is the player text. I presume because it only says Newman that it means from Seinfeld. (laughs) It does, yes. It could be anyone named Newman on Earth (laughs) said this sentence. (laughs) You're not wrong. This card is a four mana four four trampler. It's hexproof during combat. Hexproof during combat, does that matter? No. Versus just hexproof? No. I didn't think so. I mean, combat tricks sort of matter. Those don't exist. But they don't exist, and like, I, it's one of those, like, I feel like during combat is just a gotcha, where it's like, oh, I entered combat already, haha. Like, what? It, it's, it's hexproof, it's not like, like, if they can buff their guys. Yeah, but like, it's one of those, like, during combat, you like, Make it something else, minus one, minus one, and your thing, plus one, plus one. None of that matters. No, it doesn't. So then this is now a four, and I'm not trying to belittle the design, but from a understanding how this card works perspective, this then is a four mana, four, four trampler with the rampage three and the additional text at the bottom of effectively like rampage draw card. Is that how I'm understanding it correctly? It's like rampage draw card and three. It's... Yes, exactly. It's Rampage, it gets plus three, plus three, but also your opponent gets to draw a card. And, yeah, I mean, Rampage is on becoming blocked. Oh, sh- okay, shit. I didn't realize the opponent drew the card. Yeah, yeah, It's blocked by more than one creature. Damn, oh. did you read this card at fucking all? I'm drunk and I know this card better. <laughs> I had to listen to you read it. It was very hard. <sighs> it was. You did not do a very good job. <laughs> it was only hard because you refused to pronounce Pangolin correctly. So... <laughs> That's a huge downside. Why is that a downside? Because they draw the card. Yeah, they draw the card for... But the question is, if your opponent's sacrificing a whole creature for it, unless they're sacrificing tokens, 
In is which it case, worth it to them? I mean, I, if they sacrifice tokens because this has trample, it gets through a lot of damage. Yeah. Which my question then is, it also has hexproof during combat, so they're taking the damage. Are you getting four mana out of this card every time? If you are, it's a good card. My problem is why the rampage. So the rampage is because seven seven trample hexproof is fucking gross for draw a card as a downside. So if your opponent to draw a card, they have to let a 7-7 seven, seven trample yeah. eat two of their creatures and deal damage to them. Yeah, I guess I didn't realize like 7. 7 is like yeah. basically bigger than everything else in your queue. Yeah. So it's killing at least something and doing damage probably. I actually really like this design, by the way, because while, while you're in combat with it and they have to choose if they're going to give it the rampage bonus, it's hexproof. Yes. I'd argue it should be hexproof and indestructible during combat. No. Ooh. No. What? At which point, Why? they just may as well make it unblockable. It should yeah. be hexproof and indestructible while no. attacking. It nah. doesn't make any sense. Nah. Why would you need this to be indestructible? Uh, so my problem becomes... The card's not quite strong enough. To... No, I guess, I guess I'm worried about cards that don't exist in Peasant anyway and never will. I guess. So you're you're right. You're trying proof is enough. to compare it to Questing Beast. I understand. I I kinda am, <laughs> and that's my problem is I have to hang up on that. When I compare it to Vine Mare, it doesn't compare as perfectly as Vine Mare, but it's close enough, and it's probably your second best looking at your creature options. Well, the second best is the other Vine Mare. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so I like it less than Vine Mare. I probably like it less than Trumpeting Herd. I like it less, less than Phantom Centaur. And Renata is like a different archetype defining card. I'm willing to be wrong on this. I don't know if I like this less than Trumpeting Herd. Ooh. It, it maybe. would be sick. Uh, the problem is it's still just a 4-4 on instant speed removal before you attack. It's still just a 4-4 against sorcery speed removal. Yeah, okay, you're probably right about Trumpeting Herd. And that's why I like Trumpeting Herd more. Yeah. So, Renata's special. Renata has a different use. I think I like it about on par with Phantom Centaur. I think I like Phantom Centaur more. Phantom Centaur has the added benefit of also synergizing with the plus one counter decks. That's true. Yeah, I mean, the plus one plus one counter synergy might push it over. Because I was going to say, like, Postal Pangolin is... It doesn't really have any synergy with anything else. It's just a stat no. creature that is interesting in, like, the blocks and the what the it yeah. itself is doing. At which point, I like it more than Briarhorn's Comet Trick, and I like it more than Kozlik Predator's generic body with a 1-1 one, one attached, or with a 0-1 attached. I agree attach. with you. I agree so, with you. it is at least test-worthy in your cube, if not just good enough to play in your cube long-term. I agree. Okay, cool. Next up, we've got Festive Trent, which is 2 green-green for a 0-0 zero, zero Noble Tree Folk. Festive Trent comes into play with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters. Creatures you control with plus one plus one counters on them have trample. You can pay two and a hybrid Azorius. So that's two hybrid white blue for a to put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. Okay. Yes. Discussion on is this a green creature or is this a what? Okay. So if it's mono green, it's a three three trample for four, which is probably not good enough. It is not. But it's closer to green plus colorless than to a multicolor card, in my opinion, in the same way we'll get into on a future episode about the hybrid cards. Mm -hmm. So, okay, Christian, you can take it from there. I'm sorry for interrupting you. No, 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 you're fine. I This card, you do not play it unless you are having the capabilities of activating that last ability. So this acts like a green-white card or a green-blue card. And I understand that they did it in that way, at least I would believe, because those are the two color combinations that most frequently will use plus one plus one counters and have synergies with them. So it's not lost on me that that's the case, and I think that that's an interesting way of making that work. Um, thinking of it in that way, I'm still worried about the mana cost to value ratio of this card. 
And that's where I'm hung up as well. My question becomes, you're paying four mana up front for a 3-3 trample that gives other creatures a plus one, plus one trample. I'm not going to get into that. My question becomes, that's not good enough, but is three mana too much for its secondary ability to make it good enough? Could you have lowered the mana cost to like one and then a hybrid white blue? Maybe, but I is think that the too simpler... Efficient? Mm, I think the simpler fix is this should be one green green casting cost. Yeah. Like, okay, three mana, three, three trampler with upside sometimes doesn't make it in my cube. Yeah, I was just looking at what you have at three and like that would tangle with the rest of your three drop section. Yes. And then it's not like this weird, awkward, kind of dead-ish card when you don't have synergies going on. And then it becomes a three-mana, three-three trampler that can attack, and okay, later on I can make it bigger, I can make something else bigger, that sort of thing. But at four mana, you are going in the red to do these things. Okay, so let's let's pull back for a second before we completely trash this poor person's feelings. Oh, I'm not trashing it. No, 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 no. Let's pull back for a second. If this was in a normal set, a 3-3 three, three via plus one plus ones trample that gives other creatures with plus one plus ones trample for four mana that then has an ability that gives plus one plus one counter for some amount of mana sink, is that good enough for you to look at in a normal review where we at least debate it for a few I minutes? I think it would be broad enough. Yes. It would be. Okay. I would hope that gets brought up with what I'm looking at currently in your list. So my question then becomes, are you currently playing a green, white, plus one, plus one counters archetype? Yes. In my cube? Absolutely. Are you playing a green, blue variant? Uh, In my current version of the cube, no. But while I can't evaluate this card in this context, I will be once I add custom cards in. I agree, but let's not look at that because the people who submitted these don't know about your secret mechanic. That part is irrelevant. So this is essentially two and a white for the plus one plus one counter mechanic, at which point to me, it's not good enough. I would like to say one thing in contrast to that. The blue, since this ability can be done at instant speed, means that your blue-green player can play a flash-style deck with things like the uh what's the blue green simic uh frilled Frilled mystic Mystic? so like the counter spell that's a creature as well so you're playing the like counter spell type thing but at the same time you're threatening the counter spells but if they don't do anything that you need to counter you put a plus one plus one counter on it on a creature like I definitely appreciate that, what you just brought up. I'm not saying that that's good enough in your cube. I don't know if that's... Because eh, like you said, like this is a 4-drop, 3-3 three, three trample. It's a bit too anemic. But I just want to say, like, there's not nothing there in the blue-green deck, even as it is. Yes. I also agree with that. Let's move on. We're overanalyzing this. Let's get to the best card in the whole submissions. <laughs> I am completely unbiased because this card has, says the word cascade. Yeah. Go ahead and read it, Brad. Go for so, it. We're in colorless. Next up next up is unfortunately a five mana artifact called Alara's Claymore. It is a legendary artifact equipment. It has equipped creature gets plus two, plus oh, and has haste. When Alara's Claymore enters the battlefield, you may attach it to target creature who entered the battlefield this turn. It has Equip 2, and it has Cascade. Everything was terrible until the last word. (laughs) Okay, okay. I agree with you in a rare cube. Christian, outside of Skull Clamp, which you have banned, and Heirloom Blade slash... Grafted War Gear? Grafted War Gear. What do you play... For equipments, then not bone splitter, not bone splitter, <laughs> not much. My problem is this is entirely a card that would exist inside of retail limited magic. This is okay. blood braid elf, except it's colorless. I no fuck you, Eric. <laughs> this is no, you're right. Yeah, to me, this is common blood braid elf, except it's colorless. This is what happens in a standard set at 
common if you make a cascade card. It does fucking nothing for five mana unless you hit a creature. Or it costs two more mana to give a whole whopping plus two plus oh and fucking haste, which we've always learned throughout the history of Magic the Gathering is not worth spending a single mana on after initial investment. Would you feel differently if this was equip one? No. No. Okay. It needs to be equip zero. At which point you get rid of the flavor text line, which is beautiful, I admit. No, the design of this card is fucking amazing. Whoever designed this, yeah, you did a fantastic job. I, I love agree. it. My, my problem for Christian's Cube is this could have been a three drop. For normal limited, you may have been able to, at uncommon, push it to a four this drop. This is a four drop. It, it's probably a four drop at uncommon. At uncommon, that's probably a four drop. In Christian's Cube, probably a three drop. Or maybe well, a four drop a, with equip one. You can't go two or, because then the cascade doesn't matter. Right. Yeah, or a four drop with equip I, two I would, and has more upside. I would go no lower than four drop on a card sure. like this with cascade. Sure. So let's call it, you could have gone as low as four drop with equip two and added more. So, okay, as the card stands, what we're looking at, we're looking at a mid-range deck, right? Yeah, well, yeah, because you're not playing it in aggro, so... And you're not playing it in, like, a ramp or a control no, style a control or deck. a... Yeah, so I guess it's only... So, in your mid-range deck, let's take green-red, for example, because that's your pretty generic green mid-range deck. Mm-hmm. And this is a five-drop that's going to get you, let's say, at worst, an elf. I mean, I get that that's not the worst case you could get. <laughs> Are a... you making the uh, the fucking equipment argument that I made at the last hot takes? Yes, right this is an exact. Okay. You're, you're doing the thing. This is okay. an exact I get thing of the whatever the Warhammer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you for. I'm glad I stopped you before going any further. Thank cause... you for understanding my joke. I'm glad I didn't have to spend the next two minutes to lay it out. Okay. I'm glad I didn't have to spend the next four days of my life editing it out. I, I'm i glad I'm not drunk enough to understand it. I, I actually don't think this card's terrible. I love the design. I just don't think it's good it's enough in your cube. It's not terrible. It's definitely not terrible. But I will admit I was higher on it until Brad brought up some good points. Yeah. Which is part of why I'm glad we're doing this. Because like it's it's not that you two are deciding things. It's that you're helping me get the correct power idea in my head of like we're at least arguing points to you playing devil's advocate right something exactly. like that and that matters because i you know not perfect i from a person who does a lot of development work in his day job i understand exactly what you're saying here i yeah. hope a lot of the audience does as well i mean i do have to say that in your cube you currently have nothing over four that's colorless yeah. So I'm like, I, I see there's a there's a space that's open. Up next, we've got Divine Collaboration. I'm going to read it, but I'm going to start off by saying this card contains the the uh, ability Adamant, while unfortunately not actually reading what Adamant is supposed to be. So I am so glad you agree with me because Adamant refers specifically to three mana. Yeah, and... So technically this is an adamant, I'll read the card anyway as is. So this is Divine Collaboration, two mana for an enchantment creature, human cleric, and it is a 2-1. And this card has five adamant abilities, where each one refers to one of the five colors, but instead of being three mana spent to cast it of one color, it's two. And in my opinion, that's not what adamant is, but I will read off the abilities here. If at least two white mana was spent to cast this spell, put a first strike counter on it. If at least two blue mana was used to cast the spell, put a flying counter on it. If at least two black mana was spent to cast the spell, put a death touch counter on it. If at least two red mana was spent to cast the spell, put a haste counter on it. And if at least two green mana was spent to cast the spell, put a plus one plus one counter on it. So, my biggest gripe with this card, I'm going to ignore the adamant thing, that's an easy fix. Sure. My biggest gripe with this card is not that it's wordy. It's that it's wordy, and you can never get more than one of the five abilities. Yeah. I was going to say the same thing of, like, we've got Crystalline Giant is the one that has, like, you know, flying, first strike, minus, trample, whatever, um, that yeah, can you, like, put counters or whatever. on it. And I'm like, yeah. that's 
annoying as whatever, but this can only have one option because you can't. Yeah. Like, there's a certain point where, like, I guess you could have your, you could add taxes to it. Like, (laughs) I think that the way, so I like this idea of it's a colorless card that depending on what mana you spend on it, it gets different things. I think how I would do it personally, make it cost three mana instead of all of this adamant stuff, just if white mana was spent, the cast has put a first strike. If blue mana was spent, the cast put a flying. Make it three mana since you're able to get more than one ability, and then you're able to often get two of them, and sometimes you can get three. Yeah, it's interesting that like they're trying to push like a mono color, you get additional Correct. bonus. And but it doesn't work. Honestly, I would like that more in a cube that didn't have rare dual lands and better fixing. Because in those right. types of cubes, like the uncommon cubes that don't have rare fixing, you're going to be two colors or maybe one color because of whatever. And like this gives you like the, oh, hey, you drafted enough mono white to make this mono white deck. And this is a bonus. Yeah. But your cube has rare lands, so it has fixing. So I'm I'm with you on the like it would be more interesting if it was just spend a mana of white or a mana whatever. I agree. All right, let's we're gonna spend too long discussing the minor things. The card doesn't say what we wanted to say. I don't like how Adamant is used on this card because it's not how Adamant was used during the set it was made. It's not a keyword, so technically you could argue Adamant may may right. may vaguely say like technically Adamant any mana isn't, of certain color. Yeah, it doesn't have to be three because of how the keyword is. It's it's an ability word, not a keyword. Right. Word yeah, is the sorry. key part. Let's move on. We've got eighteen cards left. They're all multi. Let's move into the last 18 cards, only seven of which are outside of three guilds. So good luck to those of you in Golgari, Boros, or Orzov. Start us off with Glorious Plume, me. Glorious Plume Captain, me. Glorious Plume Captain is two. Please and then a hybrid Glory white plume. blue Glory Plume <laughs> Captain is two and a white blue hybrid white blue hybrid. For a 2-4 creature bird soldier with flying. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to an opponent, you may exile that creature. If you do, return that card to the battlefield under your control with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. Obviously, this has some memes to it being a 2-4 flyer for four. But is it good enough? I will say, of all the 2-4 meme type creatures, this one actually is kind of... It's up So there. you have a flying theme in your cube, right? I do. And a plus and plus one counter. Boy, this sure hits several points. Yeah. Indeed and it it's hybrid, so it's like you can put it anywhere you need to. There's also some cool stuff where, like, if you're in the blue-black deck, this synergizes a little bit with the ninjas. Yeah, yeah I didn't think of so, that. Like, wow, it, that's interesting. It, it's... I honestly really like this card. This was one of the ones that when I first read through it, I kind of bookmarked it in my mind as like, come back to this. I like this. You know, I was I was interested in this just as like a, an efficient white flyer, blue flyer. It works well enough in either. But you bring up the ninja thing and that's like, that's an extra little bit that's like, okay, mm-hmm. that's cool. And that's not even getting into the like, what if you somehow get in there with a card with a great ETB? Oh there? yeah, absolutely. Right. So this hits like four different archetypes and it's a two four. Hell yeah. <laughs> Which <laughs> I, as, yeah. as much as the two four is a meme to us. It's the right it's set. Decent. It's it's yeah. decent for what abilities you're getting on this card. As much as it's yeah. a joke, it's still valid on this yeah. card. It's not just there to be a, a joke to us. The person who designed this card is salivating right now. <laughs> like they, <laughs> they, because I'm telling you, this card's up there. It really, really is. No, yeah, I, I, I like it all coming together, and like, there's enough synergies with enough different archetypes in the cube that it's interesting. And and it's not like busted. No, you know what I mean. It's no. not like they're like, if you have a ninja, put a counter on your flyer and gain five life. Like, you know what I mean. This it's, does uh, something broad, not something narrow. Right. 
Correct. Well, I'm going to take the next one because I love one of the abilities on this. We've got Mischievous. Also, it's adorable. It is adorable. It is. All right, next up, we've got Mischievous Ink Thief, which is blue and a black for a 1-1 fairy wizard with a skulk. Whenever a Mischievous Ink Thief deals combat damage to a player, that player may discard a card. If that player doesn't, you draw a card. So Skulk is typically a bad ability. <laughs> I but, mean, it's not no, here no, we no, no. a bad I'm ability, with you. but it's not it's great. It's typically not no, a very I'm good ability. You. Yeah. But I really like it on this. I do too, which I am wary of because Skulk has always felt bad in practice. I know, but it, it depends on the power of what happens. Right. right? Like, which in this case is really unique and cool. And it's unique, but is it strong enough? On a two drop, I think it is. Like, you're hitting them I think on, on turn three. They're going to have cards that you're going to really Are you hitting matter. them on turn three, though? Because Skulk is not unblockable. The only... There are two ways where it doesn't happen. Are you playing against tokens, or did your opponent have wall right. moments? That's basically the two scenarios. And the second one rarely happens. The first one, yeah. it and happens. Tokens against this is... Terrible. I get that. That's fine. I not yes. happy. Or did they have Law of Rune Enforcer? Or did they have Mother of Runes? Or did they have Raven Inspector? <sighs> I mean, if they're blocking they with their Mother of Runes, come on. Or did they have Spectral Sailor? <sighs> or did they have Misplayed Shinobi? Or did they have Fairy Seer? Or did they have Enclave Cartologist? Or did they have carrion feeder <laughs> or did they have changeling outcast or did they have Drenmalkin? yeah you're right and i hate when he's I mean, right he there. is right but a lot of those are like i would trade this two drop for a mother runes i would trade this but would you p- trade it for all of the other one drops probably not He's right. Like, if they just play Thraben Inspector, you've lost and you haven't even cast this Yeah, this, this is terrible yet. against Thraben Inspector. I, I can't defend that. And Fairy Seer and Foulmire Knight. I've and got a lot of Stitcher's one Stitcher's fucking I mean, supplier. Okay, Foulmire Knight is. A, that's cheating. It has Death Touch. <laughs> okay? That's cheating. <laughs> But it's still a fine trade for them. Same with Stitcher Supplier is exactly it what is. they want anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Shit, dude. Skulk yeah. sucks. Skulk is always bad, and that's why I'm so wary. It is bad. Okay. Now, new questions since we've... Unfortunately, we've decided Skulk means this card's not good enough. New question. If I want to try this card out and I made it unblockable, is no. that too good? No. And that's my problem with the card. I want to try this card at unblockable. And that's my problem I, with the card. I think the card's is like... Skulk should always be unblockable. Skulk, in every iteration on a magic card, should say unblockable. Yeah. And Skulk was a mistake as a mechanic. I hate that you're right. Yeah. Shit, I, dude. I, always, I just I hate really when he's hate right. I really hate that you're right right here. I hate when he's right. I'm always right. I mean, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> but in this aspect, you are correct. <laughs> the next card is Ona Saboteur. Christian, read it. This is the first of several persist creatures that I got. This is one and two Demir hybrid, blue and a black or blue and a black, for a 2-2 two, two flying fairy rogue. It has persist, and it has whenever Una Saboteur enters the battlefield, target player mills one. This Let's just get the elephant out of the, you know, in the room out of the way. This goes infinite with the persist combo just like anything else does and kills them via I'm so shocked. Sounds about right. Yes. While also being an interesting card, in my opinion. It's a 2-2 flyer for three that persists. That's not nothing. You can mill yourself with this card if for some reason that is more beneficial to you. I mean, it's a... it's overall, it's a pretty cool card. I don't know if there's much more else to say about it. It's not a complicated design uh, for those who understand the in and outs of Persist. I get that, like, the the black, one black black means that it works in the Persist combo day pretty easily. Well, no, no, no. You, you don't need to be in black. That's what I'm saying. This opens up the Persist combo to all five colors. But would you actually do that? Because, like, you need the sacrifice, um, right? And black is going to be your sacrifice, maybe red. Um, there is, okay, so I, I definitely understand what you're saying. One argument I would make is, especially with all of these customs, there are more red 
uh, sacrifice that with okay. three. True enough. So you could do like a teamer or um, just guy, whatever. You could do a three color combination that's not black, though I do now understand what you're trying Does to say. Does the hybrid actually open up the combo deck? I, so your argument here is that because blue is not already, because blue does not have any of the pieces of the combo, this being blue doesn't right. help. That's a good argument to make and one I had not And of. I'm not saying that you can't make additional cards to open up blue or that this a single card doesn't open up, you know, some weird four color strategy that's cool. I just don't think that you want to have that four color strategy as a combo deck, right? Like, that's not something... No, I, I, I actually 100% agree with you. I'm glad you brought it But up. I don't think this card's bad. Like, as itself without the combo idea i think it's a fine card like mills one on yourself is reasonably nice i mean that's why stitcher supplier is a good mm -hmm. card it's because of mills three and this is like a two two flyer persist cool like this card isn't bad on its own yeah i mean i'm just not at all it, and that's why i brought up the fact that it's just a three mana two two flyer with persist as well because like that you, you know, you got your Windrake, and it's annoying. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, it keeps coming back, or at least it comes back at least Yeah, once. and, like, I was trying to bring up, like, the, oh, hey, it's not amazing, but, like, I think it's still fine on its own. So next up is a uh, a card whose name was very inspired. This is Growth <laughs> Bolt. I see this fucking, the fucking image and picture of this card <laughs> i don't i don't remember if this one was given to us by the actual person or by one of the patrons but either way it's beautiful this is fantastic this art <laughs> i think actually was provided by the okay. this is perfect growth bolt yes is two <laughs> and a hybrid red green for an instant with choose one Deal three damage to any target, or search your library for a basic forest or basic mountain, put it into the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. <laughs> so, like, three mana instant bolt, not good, right? <laughs> like, no. no. That's just not good. But three mana instant regrowth, also not very good. And that's not regrowth. even attached to this. Wait. Fuck. Three mana instant <laughs> rampant growth, also not very good. But and this is worse than that. But why is it worse than rampant? I mean, it's only oh, basically it's forest, forest, forest. forest. To me, to me, it's kind of an upside in these colors. But I get what you're saying. Okay, that's fine. Okay, I'm with you. That's also not very good. But when you get to choose between the two, I don't know if it's good enough to be honest. Like I'm a huge fan of moto cards. I wish so so badly this was. Like, maybe two Grill Hybrids as the cast. Okay, so let's go through what you've got. You've got a Talisman, which doesn't count. No. You've got Voltaic Brawler, which I love. That's interesting. You've got Grumgolly, who's part of a combo. You've got Rhythm of the Wild, yep. which is a better card by a mile. And you've got... And also part of the combo. And you've got Bloodbraid Elf, which is just one of the best cards in the color. Uh, so yes. we've got Growth Bolt here at not probably going to make it. It's very no. interesting, though, of like a here's a kill spell or a ramp spell that like sort of helps. I don't know. The the ETV tapped really doesn't help me on a three drop. I don't. Th OK, so that's that doesn't bother me, but that's why I want this to be two mana. I want it to remain instant and I want this to be a gruel card that is good in the gruel deck because you can on turn two if you know you hold up the mana and if it is the matchup where you need to bolt something you bolt it if it's not you get your ramp which is what you're right. trying to do and i love that concept the problem is that three mana is too much and you can make the argument that you're going to go elf on turn one but you're not always going to. that's my thing yeah and even if you do is it beating any other green red three drop you've got no so it needs to be less mana because it needs to happen. And I earlier. think it would be perfectly reasonable at one green red hybrid of like, okay. <sighs> That's probably too good, Eric. No, it's not. 
That's definitely too good. Because I just thought of it. That's better than every two mana bolt. Yeah. Yes. Because you can play that, it in one and green. At that point, you just play it in red. It, fuck the one in red. You okay. can play it in one in a green. Yeah, you know, you're not wrong. Yeah. It gets weird because of the hybrid. Maybe it actually should just be red-green and not be hybrid. Fuck. That is far more interesting, at which point, give it a third shitty mode that you might use one in ten games. I don't even, no, I don't even think you need to give it the third mode. I just don't like that green, green, or one in a green is deal three damage yeah. to any target. No, I, I forgot about the fact that you could play a mono green deck and have a lightning bolt. Yeah. And that's just... <laughs> <sighs> I, for one, like when my blue green decks have lightning bolt, which is why Psionic yeah, exactly, Blast is right? a perfectly normal magic card. Yeah, and I get what, that's why they probably had it as two and the hybrid red green of like... yeah. So ultimately, this card won't make it, but I want to kind of try this at red and a green for an instant, and all the all the remaining text can be the same. But I do want to try it at that cost and see how it plays. Okay, I'm going to read the next card because the four after that are your fucking fault. The next card <laughs> is Limit Hatcher, which is black and a green for a 1-2 creature zombie druid limit hatcher has sacrifice a creature put a plus one plus one counter on target creature it also has if limit hatcher is in your graveyard when a creature you control dies you may pay one black and green to return limit hatcher to your hand i'm okay so my problem is when I look at what you're currently playing and what else is offered here by the other ones, I don't want this, and I don't think the other ones are breaking what you're allowed to have by so much that I wouldn't play them instead. It's it's a rough eval to give this card, because it's totally acceptable in my opinion. Yeah, they they are... You know, anybody who submitted a multicolored card is immediately at a disadvantage. Which is so weird to cards. say out loud. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but it's true. So many people tried to metagame this, by the way, that you all ended up <laughs> in the same pool together. I mean, <laughs> it's true. It makes though. sense, though, because you only have is... so many slots in your multicolor section of the guild. Like, you have four slots, ignoring exactly. the talisman like, and if, the lions. Even if I open up a multicolored slot, like make an additional one so that I'm up to five, it still puts them at a disadvantage because I can only choose one. That's not even determining a winner. That's just straight up what can I include in my custom package, which is very unfortunate and something I didn't even think about. Otherwise, I might have warned against it. It's unfortunately true. And so I apologize to any of you that made a multicolored card and are just at an inherent disadvantage immediately from the get go. But with Limit Hatcher, I love the free sacrifice outlet. I love the counter synergy. I very much enjoy that it went green black and had counter synergy as well. That was one of the things I was going to point out. Yes, absolutely. And I like that it can be returned. I think that the cost of returning it is incredibly high. If, so I don't for know the how much I'm excited about that. For the baseline of the card. Yeah. The problem is free sack outlet for a plus one plus one counter is okay, especially at uncommon. A, the problem becomes a 1-2 two for 2 is a shit baseline, and the reanimation cost is high. Especially because it's not reanimated. Oh, okay. It's regrowth. Okay, the regrowth is high. Yeah. If re any of these that return to the hand, if they return to the battlefield, obviously that makes it completely different. It doesn't really with a card that's this low as a baseline. Not with this. Not with I don't this. know, dude. I feel like this card is the kind of card that pushes Gogari into a counters, so a plus one, plus one counter style theme. But if you're not actually yes. pushing that, this isn't good, obviously. Right. And the closest I've come to doing so is that I did admit in the recent set, they started toying around with the idea a little bit. And I mentioned that I was considering it a little bit. But uh, at the current state, I don't know that I'm willing to commit that many changes to doing so. I also feel like it needs, based on your current cube on cube 
Cobra without any of the custom cards or whatever, Black Green isn't really doing Pulse on Pulse on counters, right? No. It's also it not, not really not doing all. Sacrifice as like this theme of advantage, whereas that's... No, it's more of an attrition. Yeah. Whereas, so like that advantage thing is in the Orzov or the Mardu sections for the aristocrats. Correct. So I'm like, this card is sweet if you're going to try and change your cube enough to actually let this work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the card's cool. I love no, the card, yeah. but I don't think it fits in your no, cube as it stands. Yeah. All right. All right. The next four are all Christians' fault. <laughs> so you read the memes. Hit the memes. <laughs> Hit them hard. All right. First, we've got Cluster Guardian. Two and then two Golgari hybrid. Black and a green. Black and a green. For a 1 2 spider with reach, when it enters the battlefield, you create a 1 2 green spider creature token with reach. And it also has persist. Um, ignoring spider memes. This is four mana for two creatures. Uh, we had the the three mana that was effectively that. It was a one-two with reach that made a one-two with reach. And it did have persist. Persist means that this makes another one-two and comes back as an O-one. one So this is very roadblocky, but it's not going to kill much. Right. You can go off with the persist combo and make infinite one-two green spiders. But that doesn't win the game. It basically wins the game. It'll win the game yeah, in a I'll turn. Next turn, you should. It, it, it'll win the game in a turn. But, you know, the, there is that weakness of, like, all of the other persist combos, you just win the game. I guess apart from Kitchen Finks, you could argue that Infinite Life is also not winning the yeah. game, I suppose. Yeah, that's, that's it. I mean, it's, it's not, yeah. technically, but... The thing is, with this, you can make infinite creatures, and then they can drown. Right. Sorrow. This is a bit different. You know what I mean? Like, it is it is different. It's not win the game. So there's that going against it on top of the fact that it's a multicolored Golgari card. I feel so, like yeah. because it's hybrid, it's tough to say, like, it's a Golgari card just because of, like, what Brad's That's brought true. up previously of, like, hybrid is closer That's to fair. colorless than it is multicolor. But I see what you're saying. Like, the decks that are playing this card are gonna be green black because it's the spiders deck it's the rot widow pack deck right um it can be i mean you can just play it in your green white persist combo deck pretty easily yeah but yeah but it, i guess in a lot of cases you need black yeah out, i was like so. even then you need the sacrifice which you need the sacrifice out so yeah. I don't think this is a bad card, but I'm not yeah. sure it's good enough with what we have as options. You know what I'm saying? Like, No, no, I agree with you. All right, Creekwood Scrounger. That's the next card we got. One and two Golgari hybrids for a 3-2 with Persist. When it enters the battlefield, mill two cards, so only yourself. It also has Evoke of one in a Golgari hybrid. So you can evoke it out for two mana, it will be sacrificed, it'll come back with persist. And so this kind of is, it's almost like the evoke is the main mode in my yeah. mind, where this is two mana to make a two one that mills you for four. That seems very Does that make sense? supplier, but slightly different. Correct. And you can do that in green or black because of the hybrid cost. And then it has like this other mode, which is three mana to get, you know, you only mill two, but you get a three, two and it persists so it can block. You know yeah. what I mean? It's got like, it's not as simple as like, it's this or this. Like there, there are various ways that it can fit into different yeah. strategies. I yeah. Like that. sometimes you played turn one and elf and you're like, I'd rather just have a three, two for now. And maybe they deal with it and I get the persist. Correct. A downside to this card. If you go infinite with this one, that's not good not, for you. I mean, laboratory maniac. As long, exactly. As long as you well, don't actually, have I lab guess, man. Yeah. <laughs> if you have lab we're man, we're talking about a corner case. Normally, it's not good for right. you. Correct. So, yeah. Unless you have, I guess you have a way to stop it, so you can be like, I can go infinite. I'll go infinite four times right you know what i mean just like mill myself and then it's I'm not like a, you have to have this infinite loop that you're stuck in yeah it's like i can do this as many times as i want 
Yes, which is actually yeah. all right. So this card's pretty interesting. It's hitting on a lot of things. It's not outright insane. Does this work in a reanimate deck, though? Like, I'm trying to think, like, okay, this works in, like, the... I say yeah, yes. Yeah, I think so. I think that yes, because it becomes comparable to things similar to, like, Winding Way in it's that, enough. where it's two mana, you mill yourself a bunch, and you get, like, this minor yeah. thing out of it, where the minor thing in this case is a 2-1 roadblock. Okay, I'm... It makes sense to me. I It was one of those, like, I don't know if that's good enough in your queue, but if, if you think it might be, that's another little bonus to it of, like, it fits in multiple yes. sections of archetypes and defining, like, oh, who's going to draft it type thing. Because when you're looking at your multicolor section, you have to look at more than just, like, oh, this is one deck. Right. Yes, Absolutely. Especially with a card that's hybrid like right. this. You know, a card can fit into any color of deck, but if the deck doesn't want the effect, then they're not going to play it. So it doesn't matter exactly. that it's hybrid, right? Whereas with this, it actually does matter that it's hybrid. You can play this in a blue-black deck, you know? So um, I think that this card is very intriguing, and I think it's yeah. up there. Sure. Let's move on to Undying Spider. <laughs> Another uh, very... Uh, inspired name. Yeah, we've got a bit of a meme again. <laughs> this is Undying Spider. Three black green for a 2-4 spirit avatar with reach. It has Undying. And it also has Delirium, but it's got the same problem as the Adamant thing from before, where this is not what Delirium is at all. I noticed that reading this in advance a minute ago, and yeah. So this says Delirium, but what it really says is when Undying Spider enters the battlefield, draw a card for each creature card in your graveyard. This card's really, really insane because much like Tarmogoyf, you just play magic and it's good. So Tarmogoyf... It, is it though? No, okay, okay, let's let's break it down. Tarmogoyf on turn it's five. It's not Tarmogoyf. Or turn four. I'm not saying it does what Tarmogoyf does. I'm saying that like Tarmogoyf, you just have to play the game and it does good things. Like, okay, let's say you have one creature in your grave when you play this. That's going to happen a majority of the time. If it's not more often, you have two. On turn five, you play a 2-4 reach that draws you a card, and it also comes back as a 3-5 reach that draws you one card. Oh, this is for just each creature. Sorry, I was stuck on Delirium. No, that's why delirium needs to be okay. Removed. Let's okay. The word delirium yeah. does nothing. Okay, here. sorry, I was it's stuck also on incorrect yes. card types. Like if you have two creatures in your grave, this is a five mana two four reach that draws you to and undies and draws you. That to. seems solid. Anything more than that, you start. I mean, you you start getting into oh, oops, I had five creatures, I accidentally drew ten. Yeah, like yeah, it gets points off for me just for misusing the term delirium. Although, granted, once again, this is a card that uses an ability word wrong rather than a keyword wrong, which is harder to argue because ability words don't have rules text. Yeah, but this one's pretty egregious. Yeah. <sighs> this one's this one's pretty egregious. <laughs> I mean, it, it's yeah. if we ignored the delirium. And just get rid of that. The card seems pretty strong because, yes. like, think about top decking this after a board wipe. Holy yeah. shit! I mean, it's just really. It actually gets to a point where you accidentally run the risk of milling yourself out in the green black deck. Yeah, I don't know about that. And I don't you know, know if I mean? that's a bad. I, thing. I also <laughs> I think that's an iffy question, but not immediately. But like you, yeah, you. You draw your cards, and then you're at, whatever, 33, and then you're like... Yeah, you're like, oh, I've got eight cards left in my deck. I gotta really be careful. Yeah, I gotta win this game. You know what I mean? Like target kill it, and you're like, oh, I drew 13. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, you should be able to you, win at that point. If you're... Like, yeah. Like, I would argue this card is better in a deck that's not trying to mill yourself. Yes. Okay, I see what you're saying. Like, if you put this in sure. a bunch of, like, you see winding what I'm way and whatever, like... Yeah, like you go Stitcher yeah. Supplier, Winding Way, okay. Seder Wayfinder, and then like you play this and you're like, oh, I see what shit. you're saying. 
<laughs> Not to mention all I drew were a bunch of other things that milled me. I still me. think oh, it shit. would be like good in that deck where it's like, yeah, okay, there's a downside, but like the upside is you play this on turn four with a an elf and you go, I drew four cards because of my winding way. <laughs> go. That seems fucking amazing. Yeah. And then it yeah. undies. Like <laughs> So I <laughs> That's that's what I'm worried about this card. I think it I think it needs more time in the design process and it needs it needs development not yeah. design Cor- sorry yes correct it needs it needs some changes that i don't necessarily have off the top of my head right now because it's late and i've been talking about magic cards for like six hours yeah i see what you're saying we're like it's an interesting idea but there's a little bit tweaks here and there that could make it like that much better to be just perfect for what you want in a cube yeah, yeah. i don't think it's bad as what it is right now either though like Clean it up a sure. little bit, get rid sure. of the delirium and whatever, and like it's still a spider that's drawing you a bunch of cards. It's got them dying and like cool. Absolutely. So next up, this is Christian Sweat Dream three, <laughs> three and two Selesnia hybrid for a two four enchantment creature Dream Spider. Ooh, a Dream Spider. <laughs> Hell yeah. And it has Constellation. Whenever this or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, another target creature loses all abilities and is a 2-4 spider with reach. <laughs> this is just the memeiest card I put on this list. <laughs> it's so meme I'm s- I'm almost sorry for actually putting this on the list, but it <laughs> is the actual thing this person submitted. I would be sorry <laughs> until, like, I'm thinking of it, it calls him out perfectly at which point you're not sorry anymore that's where i yeah am. but like i'm thinking of <laughs> oh christian wait wait christian you didn't read the flavor text oh true, 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 true. So this is a quote from ashiok nightmare weaver this one's a classic wait what <laughs> the art's perfect too <laughs> it is so it, is. it would be more perfect if they used actually christian's face they probably didn't oh, have yeah. the stalking photos that you do. Everyone <laughs> has the stalking photos I have. Just ask for them. <laughs> so I have, I, I know that we all understand this one can't, win, <laughs> but I do have what a do question. What do you mean? Or won't. I this meme can't, can't or win. won't, sir. Uh, there's a lot of paperwork. I don't know if it could happen in time, but there. There's the question I have of much like the Archon from uh, yesterday. Um, does this just ruin a board state because it just makes everything a two four? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. So like that's I, always awkward. I just that's all. Two I fours to are say. probably not the best place for magic to be. I'm just going to say this out loud right now on this podcast. <laughs> I love specific two fours, but I, I feel understand like that. if you were trying to push the green white enchantress style thing, you wouldn't want to turn them into two fours. <laughs> like no two twos sounds great <laughs> this card could be cool i get the memes and i'm i'm on board i love the card for that aspect but stepping back a <laughs> bit into actual magic gameplay maybe make them two twos <laughs> and it'll be better <laughs> i'm just cracking up because you know i don't know who did this <laughs> you know whoever did they just wanted a laugh and they're probably dying cracking up that we're talking about this card. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, well, this can't really work because it's got these problems. They're just like, what? Shut up. I Go love Constellation. Hey, I, I love fan Constellation. Of I love yeah. Sweat Dreams. Whoever made this card knew you to an extent <laughs> that is uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't my card. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's move All right, on. I'll read the next one to give you a reprieve. <laughs> next up is Deep Root Recruit, which is blue-green hybrid, blue-green hybrid for a 2-2 creature merfolk warrior. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you may pay one. If you do, put a plus one, plus one counter on Deep Root Recruit. I wish this at least said target creature you can <sighs> I just kind of wish it didn't pay a mana. This is the kind of card that feels like they balanced it for a magic general l- normal release, limited environment. Yeah. Where this would be a just a phenomenal card for a 
for certain sets that are looking at plus one plus one counters and you know non-creature spells and stuff like that but yeah. it's a bit weak for your cube it absolutely is um and i'm you know sorry to whoever made it not to just throw it away immediately it's not that i don't like the design i even like it's it's a little bit awkward trying to play decks that have a balance of non-creature and oh, creature yeah. spells but that doesn't mean it can't happen it, it happens um the problem is it comes from the paying yeah. the one yep. you don't really want to do that and you don't want to do it for a plus one plus one counter on especially just in your simic like the simic is supposed to be yes holding up your mana for the counter spells right like you play a dude then you yeah. threaten with that one and protect it to kill your opponent, and you're threatened with your counter spells. This is a tax on top of that threatened counter spell. Yeah, especially because it doesn't have like yeah. trample or something. You know what I mean? Where like this can get bigger, but it's also not getting that yeah. much scarier. I I love the idea. It just needs to be pushed a little bit more for cube. It needs yeah. to be pushed. For All right. Up right. next, Eric, read us the first of the Boros cards, which I want to make almost entirely your problem, but it's also Christian's problem. It is. It truly, <laughs> truly is. That means we're going to start the Boros with Presence of the Legatus. Is Legatus a thing in magic? I don't know if it's Legatus or Legatus. It's probably an actual Roman. Hold on. It's probably just Legatus. a made up word to make us all get fucked. Nope. It was a high ranking Roman military officer. There you go. Legatus. Okay, well, the presence of Legatus is three red-white for an enchantment. When presence of the Legatus enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white and red soldier creature token for each artifact you control and each instant or sorcery card in your graveyard. You can pay red and a white to have creatures you control gain haste until end of turn. So, so this took a, a turn I wasn't expecting, yeah. by the way, when I first read it. I, I had to read it twice because I went, wait, what do you do? That's not what I thought you were going to do. Um, the activated ability, we don't want to pay one mana for no. that. I don't think we want to pay Boris for that. Probably no. not. No. I do understand that the thought is you can drop this and cast that ability to give them all haste, but that's seven mana. Yeah. That's more mana than you want to be playing in a Boros deck. Well, this is like sort yes. of a riff on Assemble the Legion, right? Which is why I thought it was going to do assemble the legion things instead it cares about artifacts and instants and sorceries in your graves oh no sorry i'm sorry instants and sorcerers in your grave artifacts you control that's a little confusing I, which is, yeah it is a little confusing i don't mind it though because it's one of those like in your slow controlling red white deck you're gonna be playing artifacts to ramp so your signets or whatever and you're gonna be sure. playing instants and sorceries to kill your opponent's shit so yes i have two problems with what you're saying works in a deck construction the two problems are much as i wish big red white control could exist it's going to take a lot of customs to make that work in my cube because there are like no whiteboard wipes. that's probably true he doesn't even have wildfire not yet this i is don't true i'm working on it i'm serious but my point is that the second problem that I have with this is that even if you do that, this doesn't really like win you the game. You know what I mean? Like you jump through all these hoops and let's say you get like seven one ones. OK, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. like, yeah, no, I'm with you where it's similar it's, to uh, what's the rise from the tides or whatever. It's like rise from the tides, but rise from the tides has a lot. It makes two twos. It makes two twos. Yeah, you know, like that that instantly yeah. doubles it. And this is just when it ETBs. Yeah, exactly. I want to like this card. I really do because I I'm a huge sucker for the Boros slow decks that are controlly. Understatement of the year, by yeah. the way, for those of you at home. Yeah. And I like that there's a card trying to push something that's not just turn everything sideways, but this ain't it, probably chief. Probably not. There's there's ways to make this good enough, but it's probably not good enough with your current setup in cube, which is disappointing. Correct. <laughs> it is disappointing. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I want to try this card out, but I know it's not good All enough. right, Eric, read one more before I give them over to Christian. Oh, I get a goblin. Imagine that. You do. <laughs> and this art was not chosen by the submitter, it's but it's it. very cute. <laughs> We've got goblin pawnbroker is a hybrid red, white, and a red interesting for a 2-2 goblin yes. artificer 
Whenever you cast an aura, equipment, or vehicle spell, flip a coin. If you win the flip, draw a card. If you lose the flip, sacrifice that spell and create a treasure token. Ooh. Well, that's a hell of <laughs> a gamble. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, all right, I'll play my pawnbroker. I'll play my grafted war. Sorry, I'll play a treasure. Pass. I- yeah, I mean, treasures are good. I like treasures. Yeah. They're, you know, the mana ramp, it's an artifact. I like getting the spells I, I cast. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Drawing a card is the upside, though. Like, imagine c- casting the Grafted War Gear and drawing a card. I don't need to draw a card. I casted Grafted War I'm just War saying, Gear. like... Cast a grafted warrior, draw a card, <laughs> equip to the goblin pawnbroker, win the game, right? Like, that's how that works, I think. Um, I'm not sure about that. It sounds right to me. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Christian, <laughs> move on. Veteran blacksmith. A red and a white for a 1-3 human soldier. Whenever an equipment enters the battlefield under your control, you may attach it to target creature you control. I think that somebody changed the text on this uh i think it was slightly altered from the person who gave it the art because the original text was whenever an equipment enters the battlefield you may attach it to target creature you control which is very oh so you could like steal your opponents oh yes i believe that is correct and while I don't know if that's what they intended, that's what they wrote, so we need to judge it on that. Fair enough. Yeah. Because I actually had this conversation with my girlfriend when I was explaining it to her that I didn't know if they meant to write it that way, but that does make it kind of interesting. Like, he's he's so... He's such a veteran that, like, somebody shows up with their sword and he's like, that's mine now. Here to you go, honest, son. To be honest... He, like, gives it Either to his way guy. is an interesting thing that hasn't happened. Most of the time, it's when it enters, attach equipment to target creature. This yeah. ability well, exists. This ability exists, but not as a static that any time the equipment enters, it attaches. Correct. So that's an interesting thing. Like Even if it's not your equipment or other equipment, like, it's an interesting idea of just like equipments are automatically attaching to something when they enter. Um, mm-hmm. but I do think that like, unless it's worded the correct way, which is you also get to steal your opponent's stuff, which I just like, obviously if this is out, they just don't play right. the sword. I would hope not, but I, I would also, but then sometimes you get them and no one has fun and it ruins the day. That's yeah. Cool, right? I always have fun when my opponent doesn't have funs, funs, <laughs> fun, but it's fun just is like, zero sum game, sir. It's that just slight upside that i actually kind of want to exist on the card yeah I, because again it was on the original card so we're gonna evaluate yeah. it that way we're, oh i'm i'm judging and it that way I yes don't hate that because it becomes like a sort of hate bear-esque type thing which feels white to this red style equip yes. thing it also is sort of a uh a valve for like you know i i I want to make more playable equipment in my custom package. You know what I mean? So it's nice that it acts as a safety valve. The latest uh, Commander Legends was trying to push the equipment aura type thing as like an art, an archetype. I wonder if this could also pick up auras. Uh. Then you get into the whole issue from a lore perspective with a guy who's a blacksmith and you have to find something that <laughs> no, you, no really you do, do. You have to find you're something not wrong that, no yeah. you're right you're right I'm laughing because you're right and I thought about it like somebody's like I bless you and he just shows up he's like no 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 he just like grabs the air and just like puts it on himself he's like you bless me and he just like the walks away the only reason I bring that up is because like <laughs> in cubes there's only so many equipment even if you're gonna push that style you were right it's not like auras make up an additional so many things but it's like that extra like three or four cards right yeah it does hurt that much as this needed to be well i I don't know if it needed to be multicolored i guess but it is multicolored and that's a whole slot which it makes sense if you're trying to push that as an archetype for that guild right like this is sweet but Uh if you're not 
<laughs> there's just not enough art. E- yeah. There's not enough equipment in a generic cube. Yep. I agree. All right. Last card, even though it's technically a white card, I put it down here. Well, yeah, sure. This is Rhinon, the ambusher. I'm going to assume it's Rhinon. Could be Rinon. This is not a real name. Renan the Ambusher, one white white for a 2-3 legendary human archer. And this has a lot of abilities, so bear with me here. It's doing a lot of different things. Okay, this card has Flash. This card has Vigilance. This card has Dash for one and a red. This card has Tap. Renan the Ambusher deals one damage to target attacking or blocking creature. And this card has When Renan the Ambusher leaves the battlefield, tap target creature. Oh, it's doing all kinds of things that don't all necessarily synergize together, and it's kind of very hard to understand what this don't card Don't forget the to flavor do. text. It does, sorry. Flavor text from himself. Norin? No, never heard of him. <laughs> uh, it's almost like it makes sense on what the hell this card is actually trying to do. Yes. It's, I, I don't know. Yeah. No, I'm... <laughs> it's just, it's so confusing and and i'm not discrediting the person but that is one of the problems with this card is we're talking about me now let's imagine your average drafter how i mean it just what are you supposed to do with this card uh why does it have flash with dash yeah why does it have flash at all because it doesn't have flash you can have your other stuff attack flashless in tap it to deal one damage no, 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 no. You it doesn't can't have tap haste. It you flash it. That's what I'm saying. You can only tap it right away with dash. So the flash is weird, unless they're saying you can flash on your dash, which I don't know I if that's legal. don't think that's how that works. Well, I mean, dash is... Yeah. Actually, is dash an alternate cost? Someone has to look up the actual reminder text. Dash, you can well, cast it, and it gains haste. But is it an turns. alternate cost? But I don't cost. know if it's an alternate cost, yeah. Is it an alternate cost or is it a different ability? I assume it's an it's alternate, an alternate cost, cost. At which point, yeah. flash matters. Okay, yeah. so you can flash, so you can flash a dash. dash. You, you can dash. You flash. could flash a dash. You can so, flash dash. You could okay. flash a dash. That was something I was confused about, which was hurting my thoughts. On I'm this just card. confirming that you can indeed flash a dash. Yes. Okay. Flash a dash is a go. It. So it. it okay. So we got Operation It works the way you would want it to work, even though that's not particularly efficient. <laughs> you can flash it in as a dash, tap it to damage a target attacking blocker creature, blocking creature. But then why do you want to tap something after it leaves? I, I don't know. I got nothing on that. <laughs> and it has vigilance. I mean. So you can do the other thing. Which is play it, attack, and then still be able to. So tap you dash it. it in, you swing. Okay, okay, okay. No, no, no. <laughs> no, if you dash, it bounces at your end. Yeah, yeah, but you dash it in, you swing with it. Then when they block, you tap it to deal damage to that blocking creature. So you kill it uh-huh. because that's what is going to happen. It, <laughs> so it was an elf it. or something like that. Then at <laughs> okay. the end of your turn, it comes back to your hand. And you tap the other birds because, <laughs> and then pass yeah, the turn. Yeah, just as like a and they untap. you know just to show them, hey, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> oh, I'm not laughing at you, person. There's a lot of there's a lot of things going on with this card, and uh... I don't know what it's trying to do. I know it's capable of doing many things, but I don't know what it's trying. Yeah, to just do. not well. Yeah basically it's yeah. cool though there's a lot of moving parts give it that i don't i i like it but i don't like it from a a cube designer standpoint when i'm thinking of my players keeping them in mind i don't like it from a game designer standpoint i like it because boros is shit so this would slide in perfect <laughs> this you've made boros complicated congrats <laughs> a step in the right direction perfect. <laughs> This isn't about combat, except I think it still is. <laughs> Moving on. So we're on to, we got five cards left. Four of them are Orzov. Let's start with a one drop. Lots of hybrid cards, I'm noticing. 
This is a single hybrid Orzov, so a white or a black, for a 1-1 vampire. Did I say what this was called? This is Insatiable Urchin. 1-1 vampire. It has lifelink. You may cast Insatiable Urchin from your graveyard if you gained life this turn. I love this card. I think you, you do. You would. It's almost like they made they it for really me. Did. They knew who they were targeting on this competition. Yeah. I love that you can attack with it, and it doesn't matter what happens to it. You just bring yeah. it back. It just comes right back. That is pretty sweet. I'll, I'll give you that. And the hybrid... I mean, come on now. means it goes in basically everything. Like, fucking hell. <laughs> yeah, you, you can be recurring this in a white deck. You could. Which is weird and i kind of like it this would be super annoying in a white weenie style deck holy shit (laughs) yeah it's got lifelink you can put equipment on this you put a bone splitter on this you're like attack with my three one they're like ooh, block you gain three and you're like cool i cast my my thing back and i'm gonna put bone splitter on it vampire is a bit disappointing it doesn't help in any way (laughs) but I think that's actually okay. One thing that I've actually been noticing when I'm making customs is I go out of my way to always have them have a relevant creature type, and that actually takes away from when it accidentally comes together. Yeah, I I see what you're saying, where it's like you're trying to design something that's like perfect always, but like sometimes that doesn't help. Yeah, like it gives no credit to the deck designer and the drafter. If everything's a zombie, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't, then it's just like, okay, I don't even have to think about it. My deck will just work. Whereas, like, you have to make a conscious decision. Would you rather have a human? Would you rather have a zombie? Or do you want this, which won't benefit from your tribal synergies, probably, but maybe the effect is worth it? Yeah, it makes sense. I agree. Overall, I really like this card. I, I think there's, I think it's cool. I think it's an interesting take on the recursive black one drop that also happens to be white. Yeah, definitely. All right, I'll take the next one. Eric can take the one after that. Christian, you have to read the one after that. (laughs) And then I guess we all get to read the final one. Sure. It's about the friends we made (laughs) along the way. That's right. It's about the booty. Go on. Next up, we have Bereft Lover, which is two and a hybrid white black for a one two human wizard. It has lifelink. And when Bereft Lover enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 white spirit creature token with flying. It also has sacrifice another creature, you gain two life. Free sacrifice outlet, and this one is in white. Mono white. Or mono black. Or mono black. (laughs) Yes, but the mono white is very, very important. Is it? Because that it is incredibly important. It does not exist. And so this means that your persist combo deck can be green, white. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay, I'm back with you. It's really, yeah. really important. I thought your punchline to this joke had something to do with that Lone Rider guy. <laughs> no, no, no. No, 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 no. No. You, that also works, though, actually, now that I think about yeah, it. Yeah, you just have to swing with this, deal damage, sacrifice a thing. Yeah, sweet. All right, bonus points. (laughs) But the key that I liked from this is because it's hybrid, you can. And also, oh, shit, this works well with the last card, too. Cool. But anyway. Yes, it does. (laughs) Cool. But that all said, the key. Mono white free sacrifice outlet. That's cool. I like it. Yeah, I mean, it's not something that's pretty prevalent in magic to have white sacrifice. It's, I am trying to, so from a flavor perspective, because that matters for tournament purposes here. Oh yeah, definitely. From a flavor perspective, what is happening here? I'm not saying it's difficult to understand, but what is happening? Uh, Somebody, it's Romeo and Juliet. My problem is to sacrifice another creature, which doesn't work so well in mono white. Not when a creature dies in in the lore side of things. Or if it was white, it should be sacrifice itself. That is interesting and is actually how I read it the first time. I that's why I stopped myself earlier. Um, hmm. It also is a little bit weird. Okay, so it's like you've got okay, so you've got a living being and a dead being, and the title is bereft lover. So it's like 
they were a couple and the one person died. But then, like, the living one can re-sacrifice the spirit to become healthier. That sounds about right. Yeah, this is... It's weird, right? I mean, you're supposed to move beyond the... uh... I know. I thought about that, and I don't know if that's what they're going for or not. I did think about that. (laughs) I I think you're both thinking too much into this. We probably are. (laughs) certainly. I think this is just a cool card and reasonably set in the power level that would work well with your cube <laughs> yes let's i want to think back by the way because we have to judge these cards against each other remember the uh white card that made yeah, two goats? yeah five hours ago now we have to compare it those. was only like four hours ago eric <laughs> maybe three and a half yeah it was four and a half hours guardian ago. of the flock um, we have to we absolutely have to compare these two. I like this one more, and I'm sad to say it. Sure. Yeah. I, this one's, quote unquote, a better card. My problem comes from a flavor perspective, from a top-down design perspective. At yes. which point, is it a top-down design? I mean, why is it a human wizard? It's hard then? to say. I feel like it should be a human cleric, maybe. I don't know. Something else other than wizard. Human lover. So are you sacrificing someone else to turn the spirit back in? Uh, uh, everything's yeah, wrong. Yeah, should it be like... In some way. Human. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like the person who submitted this, they had the opposite thing happen to them as the other person from earlier, where we started off and they're like, oh, I got this. And now they're just getting sadder <laughs> and sadder and sadder. Like, I didn't really think about the lore. I was just, I just made the name after the fact. Brad, shut I, the fuck up. You're yeah, ruining this like, for me. Up, Do you not up. understand that this is a cool card that fills your fucking hole in cube so you can have your green white sacrifice deck while also working on in the, the Mardu aristocrats deck. What the fuck is wrong with you people and your fucking lore shit? Especially. <laughs> Especially because I know for a fact this person didn't submit a card with art either. <laughs> so they're definitely focused on the mechanics, not the lore behind it, probably. And they're just pulling their hair out. Oh, yeah, because right the card itself is. <laughs> I'm is totally going to play awesome. this card. <laughs> yeah, it, it hits every. every I love point this card. You'd want. It has lifelink. It... But they are just hating the fact that they probably just lost out on a top three <laughs> placement because of. Because I'm the an lore. asshole. Yeah. <laughs> because of the lore of their card. <laughs> and their made up fake right, universe. Exactly. <laughs> Didn't have enough good lore. You Sorry. Have fucking Next. submitted to a show and the Vorthos is the main host, you <laughs> idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I love you so much, whoever made this. It's a great card. I can't wait to play it. We gotta move yeah, on. Yeah, I guess I'll take the next one, which is Sever the Bond, which is one white black for a sorcery as an additional cost to cast this spell. Sacrifice a creature or planeswalker. Exile up to two target permanents. Who it, it says permanents. Say permanents. It does. Fuck those two lands in particular, you do not get to cast a three drop next turn. Fuck your two lands every time. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I guess you could hit a planeswalker if you're worried about it, or maybe an enchantment. So if you're ahead or at parity, you always yes. hit their two lands. If you're behind and they're... N- not mana screwed you hit their two biggest threats but if they're mana screwed and you were also mana screwed and you just came back yeah you hit their two lands. yeah this is this is absolutely a land destruction spell that just happens to have other options all right christian read us the next disaster of a magic card <laughs> the ne- the last two cards <laughs> Well, this one actually wasn't submitted with art, but they would be very proud of the art that was created for them. I know who submitted it. They would be very proud. They're, I'm sure they're incredibly happy now that they're quickly going to the list to see what was done. So this is Campbell's Chicken Noodle Spoof, which is a name completely unrelated to what the card is or does. <laughs> Because it's a creature. (laughs) It's a human advisor. This is two white black for a 2-4. Creature human advisor. It's got lifelink, and it has whenever you gain life, choose one. Target creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. 
Target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn, or each opponent loses one life. I don't understand why this gives a creature a non-permanent buff after you've gained life. I don't know. <laughs> like, you can attack with it, and then you gain the life, and you're like, cool, it's a 3-5. Past turn, it's a 2-4, bitch. <laughs> Eat my chicken noodle spoon. <laughs> it's a human. <laughs> It's an advisor, question mark. <laughs> hey, that human advisor is chunky as shit. <laughs> Made with lean meat. Please, please, for the love of God, everyone listening to this episode right now, <laughs> do yourself a favor, crash your car, go to the fucking show notes and click the link and scroll down to Campbell's Chicken Noodle Spoot. It's worth every second of your life support that you're on. It truly is. If you've never seen my glorious mug, go check out my glorious mug. And for the next one, check out my glorious ass. <laughs> I gave him the art for it. <laughs> I'm an asshole. <laughs> no. All right. Should we go to the final card? <laughs> yes. I'm sorry if we didn't spend enough time on the second half of these cards. We're very tired. We're so sorry. I'm not. <laughs> the last card on our list is well i would say it's the only three color card some argument could be made for that green card earlier but i'll just yeah, say yeah, this yeah. is the only true three color card and it is a piece of art and certainly it's a piece <laughs> of ass <laughs> it's <laughs> much like the human being that i use that term loosely who submitted it wow <laughs> wow some people who don't understand are like, man, they're kind of mean to their patrons. Somebody went out of their way to make this. This one's from Gwen. Yeah, this one's a, a bit <laughs> this one of is an from Deck. In joke of uh, memes and such. And yet, and yet, it's worth thinking about. I hate it's to say it. It's a cool card, so I would love to hear it. We should read this it. This card is the Cube Cobra card. Let's read it out loud. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I've got an idea. To, to finish this off, we've been through a lot together. I'm going to read the title. I'm going to read the first line of text. Then, Eric, you read the second line of text. And then, Brad, read the third thing that it does. All Excellent. Right? This won't go all poorly right. at all. <laughs> I'm not the punchline. Sultai Skullduggery. Two black green blue for an enchantment it has three things whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell draw a card then discard a card whenever a creature card enters your graveyard from anywhere you may exile it if you do gain three life whenever one or more creature cards leave your graveyard create a 2-2 black zombie creature token this card's actually kind of cool <laughs> I know it's a huge meme, no, no, no. but we should explain the meme to people who don't remember a several season old joke now. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, we got a lot of new people. About a year. This is from the final SCG con. <laughs> oh Jesus. <laughs> the first and final <laughs> Hi Parnell. Con. Welcome to the show. <laughs> a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful weekend where I got to meet many of you that I hope I ever get to meet again. We'll yeah, see. something, something. We'll probably I'll be dead. Pandemic. And the, the beginning of so many memes, <laughs> including Sultai Payoffs, a deck drafted by none other than Gwen from Cube Cobra when he drafted my deck in person. He started off, he turned to me, he was right next to me in the draft. <laughs> pack one, pick one. He shows me reanimate. The card reanimate. It's a good card. And he asks me, it's a great card. He asks me, do you support this? I say yes. Not only is reanimate a good card that you don't really need to support, but yes, I do support the reanimate deck. No, no, no. He That's... just says the word yes. Right, which it makes <laughs> well, sense. Okay, cause... yes, but I'm sorry. I was explaining to the yeah, to people. Yeah, you sorry. do That's support the saying. card reanimate <laughs> in every possible I way, essentially. I, I support the archetype, yes. So that's all that is said. <laughs> And we draft. <laughs> <laughs> and Gwen proceeds to draft a deck. Yeah. I... <laughs> full of Sultai cards that are primarily all of the payoff cards in those three colors, 
for any number of archetypes that you could imagine, <laughs> and they don't synergize together. And on top of that, he also had like not enough to support any of them. And also, he was playing. I I, I had at the time the blue and the black uh, uh, lands from Throne of Eldraine that cared about having three or more basics of their chosen type. So he was also playing those in a three-color deck where he actually had a lot of fixing. So they also didn't do shit. He had Rise from the Tides. He had Spider Spawning. He had Murmuring Mystic. He had Reanimate, but like only one thing to reanimate and no other real reanimate spells and not much to mill himself with. It was a sight to behold. And if you are on the Discord, the Patreon Discord, or you join it in the future, you can see a saved screenshot of this deck that will forever be immortalized. It's also somewhere on my Twitter page at some point, I'm sure. Most I'm sure yes, if is. you ask Gwen, he'll tweet you a picture I of think it. the best part when I looked at it was the mana base, and like you said, it had the ELD, <laughs> whatever, the castles or whatever, and I think there was the... No, not the castles. The like they were the the commons. Oh, yes. was it? Yeah, 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 yeah. The commons are the uh, yeah. What was the blue one? There's sanctuary. The, the mystic is it mystic sanctuary? Yeah. And then the other one is witch's yeah. cottage. That's what I, I remember it now. I yeah. think there was just enough basics. <laughs> yeah, you put in three yeah. islands and three swamps. <laughs> it's one of those like <laughs> holy shit. Technically, it works. <laughs> Technically, everything in this deck <laughs> in this deck works, and I hate it. And it's just all the payoffs. It's so good. <laughs> everything about it was a work of art. Yes, and he he almost won games with it. <laughs> I don't know about but that. But later on, he in that almost trip, won games with it. <laughs> I don't it. know about that. Quote he of did, the year because he 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 almost won games with it because he was still playing baleful strix and reanimate i mean yeah, come on those now. are somewhat acceptable magic cards through <laughs> through my knowledge of legacy and other formats <laughs> and to cap it off the art for this card that was submitted by gwen with the help of brad <laughs> was from this very same trip where we finished it off by going to subway and brad took a sneaky picture of me paying and so the picture is just my ass <laughs> paying for subway <laughs> so let's actually evaluate this card because it's actually worth talking about because it's kind of cool it is the ultimate sultai payoffs card so you can chain these <laughs> you can cast an instant or sorcery draw a card discard a creature exile it gain three life and then make a two two black zombie creature token. that seems pretty good I don't know. I don't really know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> My argument against it is going to be it's still a five mana do nothing enchantment. My argument for it is going to be fuck it, play it. It's hilarious. That's yeah, that's about right. It's a five mana do nothing enchantment. That's really what it comes down but to. It's a five mana do everything enchantment. <laughs> it's it's not a do nothing. It's a do everything enchantment. That is the best way to put it. If you do anything, something else happens. Okay, bias aside, if a normal patron had submitted this without art, and you did not know the background <laughs> to it, would you be interested in playing this as a Saltai card? I think the first problem that I would have is a problem with any time you play a three-color card, and that is my, like, weird, I want to balance my colors in my cube problem. So you want to run nine others and none of them are good Right, enough. and like, I can't do that, and that's a problem. But that's easily fixable by just not doing that and sucking it up. Kind of like when you play three-color Nicol yeah. Bolas. Yeah. So I can accept that. I actively am a sucker for these kinds of cards. It reminds me of a card that I'm failing to remember the name of, but it's a green mythic that's like Bountiful something or something's bounty, I think. And it was it was like whenever you play to land, you do a thing. Whenever you cast a creature, you do a thing. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, you do a thing. Yeah, sure. Um, either way, I'm actually a sucker for those kinds of effects. I don't know... I guess this is a lot like Nicol Bolas also in the way that like you pick this up early on and you're like, I'm just going to try to make it work. 
I don't care if it happens one game all night. I just hope it works and I get to go off. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. And so my thing is, all three of us are tainted because we know exactly who this is from. It's an unfortunate truth. No one who went to SCG Con doesn't know who this is from. <laughs> I do think that this is an interesting card design for Sultai, though. Like, it does everything that yes. Sultai is generally trying to do in an efficient enough manner that it all cohesively makes sense as an enchantment. That's where I'm going with this, is Christian's banned from even checking this channel, but I made a channel on the patrons' behalf in our Discord for them to all talk about their submissions gwen never shared his but i said (laughs) i said vaguely in that channel that while his is a giant joke and i laughed at it greatly i still think it has a valid chance at winning because i just really like the design as a card especially at an uncommon cube on the higher end of uncommon yes because you can more easily get away with something that's dirtily like this yes not easily no no, no. Can. yeah it's one of those i couldn't argue it for my cube no but it's that card that i wish i could argue for my cube which is where your cube tends to lie yes and also one other thing to keep in mind about this card that is interesting this is true of just these colors in general but it's in colors that benefit from a slower more controlling grind them out kind of fashion which is what this deck needs yeah you know what i mean that's just the nature of the sultai colors which is that they do everything and they have a lot of powerful spells but it's true okay enough of that let's hit the outro this has been long enough at six hours and three minutes into this recording session as i say this word yeah this was uh this has been fun there's been a lot of pretty fucking sweet cards so thank you everyone I would like to thank you all as well. And Christian, would you like to say anything? This has been one of the single most fun recordings that we've ever done. And if I didn't have to edit this, much like YouTube, (laughs) if I didn't have to edit this, I wouldn't have given a shit that this took six hours. But holy shit, this is the longest recording we've ever done Thank you, everyone, for once again making what is easily the greatest moment in what I will call a magic career, (laughs) for lack of a better word. Content creation career. Sure, including my playing career, let's be honest. I had some great moments there, too, but nothing tops this. You weren't going anywhere there anyway. (laughs) Yeah, I remember one time I didn't win an (laughs) F&M. Anyway, <laughs> what's an um, FNM? It's uh, those things we had in the before times. Uh, those existed back when I played standard. Anyway, <laughs> this has been a wonderful. Words don't do it justice of how happy I was and how excited I was. Like a child on Christmas morning when I was sitting on my couch playing Animal Crossing and Brad sent me the link to these files and I left the game and gave my girlfriend the controller and said, you play, I'm going to read you all of these over the course of the next day. All right, that's enough of this show. We have no news for tonight. (laughs) It is now tomorrow. (laughs) We have no news. We're fucking done. (laughs) I'm six hours and nine minutes into this recording. There's no outro. There's no news. You can't contact us anywhere. We're done. (laughs) (laughs) Have a great week, everyone. I'll see y'all next time. Eric, tell Brad to no. take us out. All right. First up is no, Somber Shred, I can't take us which out. is a three white white for a 2 <laughs> Oh, no. We're back in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs>